Hello everyone, my name is Kid Lee and welcome to another video on Ashes of Creation. This is a new MMO that's currently in the works by the crew over at Intrepid Studios. Now one of the really cool things that they've been doing is they've been answering a lot of community questions. So what I've gone ahead and done is sort of compiled a list of those questions and answers and I'm just going to basically bring them to you here in this video sort of one consolidated place for all of this information. So I thought that'd be a good idea. This is going to be a variety of subjects, a variety of topics, so not necessarily one thing. We're going to bounce all over the place. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. Question number one was, how many people will be in a standard party? And the answer to that is actually eight, which I thought that was really unusual that is much higher than the standard MMO that does maybe three or four. If you look at the Holy Trinity, most people will do a tank, a healer, and two DPS or three DPS perhaps. But the fact that they're actually going eight, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what they're going to do with that higher number party composition. And shoot, in some games, eight is a raid. So it's also going to be interesting to see what they're their higher end content or their raid numbers are actually going to be. Question number two is going to be, will different races have different base stats? And the answer to that is yes. There's actually a three-prong attack for that when it comes to stats. One is going to be your race. The second is actually going to be whatever class you choose that will change up your stats. And then in this case, there's actually a third one, and it's going to be your secondary class will actually affect your stats as well. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, the third question actually is going to talk about the environment a little bit. If you've seen any of the videos, and of course I'm showing some on screen here, the game looks really, really beautiful. And the game actually has changing environments, you know, uh, spring, summer, fall, winter in some zones. But the question then came out, are there any zones with fixed climates? All snow, all desert, so forth and so on. And the answer to that is going to be yes, but with the really good weather condition system they have in the game, you will still see changing conditions. So I'm going to assume what they mean is if we are in a snow zone... Sometimes it'll be snowing, perhaps sometimes it'll be sunny, but it's still going to be a snow zone. The next question is, will professions like blacksmithing have an effect on your base stats? And the answer to that is going to be no. Now, I believe the example that was brought up for this is, okay, you're a blacksmith, you're basically working all day, you're working, you know, making armor or whatever, so perhaps blacksmithing might actually have a bonus to strength or something. The developers did say that that was an interesting idea, but at this time the answer is still going to be no. The next question is, if a siege is successful against a node, what happens to your housing? Now I could do an entire video on either the siege system or the node system. It's a very advanced, complicated sort of subject. So I'm going to really kind of skim this one. But basically, a node, you could almost consider it like a zone in other MMOs. And what they're referring to as a siege, you can actually have a town inside of a node, and your town can be attacked by another group of players. So if they're actually able to successfully siege your town and destroy it, take it over, whatever, what happens to housing? Now, there's actually three different kinds of housing in the game. They have static housing, apartments, and freeholds. The static housing and apartments are inside the city. The freeholds are outside the city. So, looking at the static housing... If the siege is successful, the answer is that it is gone. But it also has the possibility of being destroyed 
in any siege win or loss. So let's say a group of players come in, they try and attack your city, you defend it, you kill them all or whatever, it's actually possible that buildings inside the town can take damage and you will have to repair them, rebuild them, or something along those lines. Switching over to apartments, it's pretty much the same answer. Siege is successful, it is going to be gone, but once again has the possibility of being destroyed in a siege win or loss. Now freeholds on the other hand, since they are outside the city, let's say again the enemy force has taken your city, there is actually going to be a time where the surrounding areas outside of the city will be basically susceptible to attack. So basically you have to get you and your friends together to then defend your freehold and try and rally to save it. So a little bit of a lengthy answer on that one, but like I said, it's a very advanced system. And so definitely check out uh, the additional information. There's, there's other videos out there or, or check out my other video that I've done about ashes if you want some more information about the uh, the node system or the siege system. Next, can you invite or give permission to your friends to actually use your freehold functions? So on the freehold, you're actually able to have, and I don't think this is the technical term, but I'm going to use the, the word stations. So you can actually have like a blacksmithing station or something like that. So you can, can you invite your friends to come and use your stuff? And the answer to that is yes. Next question is going to be, will the game have colorblind modes or options? And the answer to that is going to be yes. So very good on them. Next one is, are armor sets going to be race locked? And the answer to that is going to be no. And it's, it's always good when a game or an MMO does that. You want to be able to give the players as much creative freedom for stuff like that as you absolutely can which actually kind of goes into the next system a little bit what will you have for armor customization and they did say they're going to have both uh, apparent slots and a die system and of course there's a lot of mmos that do that you know the die system or the cosmetic system or something along those lines so it's good to see that the game is actually going to have that from the start so cool stuff uh, next up is going to be a really important question, and a lot of other games do similar stuff to this, but the question is, when you switch from your primary class to your secondary class, will you keep progressing in your primary class? And the answer from the developers is actually not sure. It's something they're still talking about. It's something they are still working on. Now, I think the progression in this game is going to be perhaps a little bit different than other MMOs. Like if you take a look at you know Star Wars The Old Republic as an example, which is a game that I play, you can actually have a choice of three different sort of subclasses within your primary subclass. And in a case like this, you can just swap between them. They all share the same like level and that sort of thing. Now for Ashes, if they're actually going almost maybe like Star Wars Galaxies or something where you had to straight grind out or you know level up a particular path. If you wanted to switch to something else, you basically had to start over from scratch, so to speak. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what they do with their primary and secondary class system in Ashes. And then the final question for this video, and this is a really interesting one, and that is... Will there be raid and or dungeon scoreboards? Question mark? And the answer is yes. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, really? That's an awesome idea. Man, I wish other games would do that. But what they basically said on the subject is they're almost encouraging speed running. But you'll actually be able to bring up a scoreboard, you know, on the dungeons, on the raids, and you'll be able to say, oh, look, this guild has the top time, and this is what they did, and, you know, here's the top five, the top ten, the top 100, whatever. 
I think that's a really neat idea in an MMO. It really encourages people to, or, or guilds to work together to see if they can do it quicker and quicker and quicker and more efficient. It really gives, you know, other than gearing, it really gives dungeons and raids sort of uh, something else to do rather than just grinding them over and over for gear and money or maybe even no purpose at all. It really gives it another purpose and I think that's a really really cool idea but there you go ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed the video this is a uh, video one of the Q&A so if you'd like to see more of these Q&A videos I will continue to uh, reach out and uh, find all of these community questions and developer answers and bring them to you hopefully in more videos but yep that'll go ahead and do it for this one if you have any comments or questions please leave them below thank you all so much for watching and with that being said, everybody keep playing and have fun.